The topic of this talk is how to convert opioids, how to safely convert opioids. This is Karen Shapiro. I'm an instructor for Rx Prep and a clinical pharmacist. Here's the problem. We're going to uh, convert a hospice patient who has been receiving 12 milligrams a day of IV hydromorphone, that's Dilaudid. And the instructions, the prescription, is to convert the hydromorphone to morphine extended release, that's the generic for MS Contin, to be given Q12, a typical dosing regimen for this drug. The hospice policy for opioid conversion is to reduce the new dose by 50%. So whatever we get, we're going to cut the dose in half and to use 5 to 15% of the total daily dose for breakthrough pain. Here's a summary. We're going to convert IV hydromorphone to morphine sulfate extended release given Q12 and use morphine immediate release for breakthrough pain. We're using the same drug for breakthrough pain. That's common, it's not required, but we're gonna do that in this case. Let's discuss why we reduce the dose of the new opioid. This is because of tolerance. A patient who is a hospice patient is gonna be expected to be using high doses of opioids. That's typical. They could have terminal cancer pain, for example. And that means that the patient's been on the opioid for a while. They are not opioid naive and they're used to the drug. So when you switch them to another drug, they're going to require a lower dose. If you don't reduce the dose of the opioid, uh, you would expect the patient to get some degree of overdose, and that would cause increased side effects such as uh, dizziness, uh, sedation, cognitive dysfunction, uh, as well as putting the patient at risk for respiratory depression. This can be fatal and this is the primary reason clinically that we're gonna be very careful when we convert opioids. Now typically, we don't cut the dose 50%. In my practice setting, we cut it lower. I don't work in a hospice setting, and we generally use a 25% dose reduction or somewhere around that. But this example is at a hospice patient, and the hospice policy states that the dose is reduced 50%, so that's what we're gonna use. And when we, when we transfer a patient to a new opioid, we've got to give the patient breakthrough pain medication. That's for two reasons. One is that we may have cut the dose too much. We don't want the patient to be in severe pain. The other reason is that pain is not even throughout the day. Pain cycles. And you'd expect the patient to need more pain medication at some times than at other times. And so we can uh, treat that acute uh, pain, that breakthrough pain, by giving breakthrough pain doses in addition to the new long-acting opioid. Okay, when we convert, we use a conversion table. I know the numbers in this chart, but when I convert myself clinically, I always check the table. I make mistakes, and I don't wanna make a mistake when I'm converting an opioid because the mistake could prove to be fatal. So I always check myself by using a conversion table. When you look at a conversion table like this one, uh, this would be an example of a, a little bit taken out of a table from facts and comparisons, pharmacist letter, whatever table you're using. You're gonna have two columns. One is for the injectable dose and the other is for the oral dose. So you've gotta highlight or circle the two doses that you're using, the one you're coming from and the one you're going to. We are going from IV hydromorphone which has an equivalent dose of 1.5, this is in milligrams, to oral morphine. So notice they're in two different columns. And the way we solve this problem is we set up one fraction equals another. In this fraction, everything on this side is taken from the chart. So you can see 30 milligrams of oral morphine is equivalent to one and a half milligrams of IV hydromorphone. This is what the patient is using. I'm going to abbreviate patient with PT. How much oral morphine is the patient using? We don't know. That's what we need to find out. But the patient is taking right now 12 milligrams of IV hydromorphone. Now, when you solve by ratio conversion, you've got to check three things. I write myself a little note, and the first thing I'm checking 
is the units and I'm checking the root of administration and I'm checking the drug. And then I put the numerator here, the denominator here, and I check off that they match. So first of all, do the units match in the numerator? Milligram, milligram, yes they do. Do they match in the denominator? Milli milligram, milligram, yes they match. Does the root match? In the numerator, we've got oral, oral, they match. And in the denominator, we have IV, IV, they match. And do the drugs match? In the numerator, we have morphine, morphine, they match. And in the denominator, hydromorphone, hydromorphone, that's correct. Okay, now that I've checked that everything matches, I can do my uh, multiplication and division. These are solved by multiplying across by the two known quantities. So here we have 12 times 30, that's 360, and then divided by 1.5 to, to solve for x. So the milligrams of morphine here is 360 divided by 1.5, which is 240 milligrams of morphine. Let's review what we did. We calculated the total daily dose of morphine required and we got 240 milligrams. Now we're gonna cut the dose in, uh, in order uh, to account for tolerance to be safe. In this example, the hospice policy is by 50%. That gives us 120 milligrams. Now we're going to divide this 120 milligrams into the dosing regimen. Morphine extended release could be given twice a day, sometimes three times a day. Some of the long-acting morphine formulations are actually once a day, but not uh, the uh, MS continent, it's generic. So this is Q12, so we're gonna take the 120 and divide that 60 milligrams Q12. Now we're going to add breakthrough pain at 5 to 15%. Be careful because your breakthrough pain is taken from the total daily dose, which is 120 milligrams. I usually figure 10%, which is right in the middle, which would be 12 milligrams. Morphine immediate release does not come as 12 milligrams, so we're going to use 10 milligrams. And 10 milligrams uh, is right between our 5 and 15% range. That's why you have a range, so you can pick an available dosage form. So we're going to use 10 milligrams of morphine, PO, orally, and that's approximately Q4 hours. This is as breakthrough, so this is PRN dosing. Now this is oral. If the patient happened to have a uh, port, an available uh, place for injection, or you just wanted to give very fast-acting pain medication for breakthrough pain, which is severe pain, in a patient on an opioid such as a long-acting morphine, then we may want to give this injection because if we give oral, we've got to wait for the patient to absorb the drug. But in this case, that's what we're using. And that's how to convert one opioid safely to another. Uh, I'd like to remind you not to do this with fentanyl or methadone. Uh, for fentanyl, we generally use the uh, conversion chart that comes with the drug. Uh, the APS pain guidelines have a table that you can choose to use for converting uh, other opioids to fentanyl. And for methadone, methadone is only supposed to be dosed by pain specialists or by practitioners who are experienced in methadone. Methadone does not have linear conversion. It is prorhythmic at higher doses, and it can be dangerous if it's used by, uh, uh, if it's dosed by practitioners who do not know how to safely dose methadone. So. Unless you're one of those pain specialists, uh, leave methadone, uh, leave methadone dosing alone. Okie doke. Okay, and that finishes our opioid conversion. If you need more, we've got our Rx Prep textbook that you can order off our website. This is a very popular review for people studying for their licensing exams. We've got live. Uh, lectures. We've got an online course that anybody can use from their computer, wherever they are. And then we've got our popular iPhone app. And these quiz questions are also available off our website for people that don't have an iPhone device. You can access them as many times as you need off our website and test your drug knowledge. 
Thanks and take good care.